This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're going to talk about what is a mind map. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Oh, hi. Seth David here with the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. Let's take a look at my notes before we get started. What is a mind map? Before I get really into answering that question, there's something I want to show you. At the end of this blog post and video, you might decide that you'd like some additional training on this topic or any number of other topics that you may have seen me cover by now. If that happens to be the case, come over here to my main website here at nerdenterprises.com and click right on the training page. Now I know that we're speeding by at about 95, 96 miles an hour on the internet, but if I could ask you to just take one slow deep breath while you're coming in here and take a look at the left hand side, here's the navigation. It's all laid out in a way that I think is pretty clear. I'm sure not everybody's going to agree, but I try to do the best I can. We do have a lot of sort of content to present you with, and that makes it challenging to present it in a way that's easy to digest. However, if you're looking for training in other software, then actually right here on the home on the main training page, you can click right here where it says quickbooksanswers.info if you want QuickBooks training. If you want training in any other software, just click right here where it says uh, visit our software training section. When you click that, it's going to launch a page right here which will give you an outline of everything that we can train you in, in addition to QuickBooks. By no means is this exhaustive. Furthermore, you can click right here where it says, what can I learn from you? And I've got a sample of the very product I'm about to demonstrate in this very screencast called the brain. This is what it looks like when it's embedded in a web page. And what you can do is you can click on a category and click on the subcategories and you can get an idea about which things we can train you in. So if you see something here and it looks like it matches what you're looking for help with, then just give us a call or click here where it says sign up and sign up for a session. And just like in our QuickBooks training site, we have essentially the same plans here. You can get a one hour training, one and a half, three and a half is what I've got set up right now. By the time you're watching this, there's a good chance I'll have added more training packages with more hours of training. We let you use them in uh, 15 minute or quarter of an hour increments. So sign up for a training session right now. The worst that can happen is you spend an hour with me and learn about a new product. Even if you just want to consult, uh, during which I can get a feel for what your business model is and based on that I can feedback recommendations to you about what programs I suggest you use and for that matter how you might use them specifically in the context of your business. All our trainings are recorded so check us out here if you want to go right to the page just go to nerdenterprises.com forward slash software dash training or like I said just come to the main site click on training everything you need is right there. Now let's go back to that question what is a mind map. A mind map is just that. It's a map of what's going on in my mind. And as you just saw, I'll show you on the screen right here right now, you could do this by hand but as you'll see it's very unwieldy because I might want to change things, add things in, create different kinds of links so it becomes pretty clear pretty quickly that doing this on paper uh, just doesn't really make sense especially when we have software in this day and age that helps us do these kind of things. Now why do I want to do this? At the very least to get organized. If you're like me and you run a small business then you're faced with the same challenges that I'm faced with most likely. One of which very often may be that you have so many ideas your head is flooding with them and you're not even sure where to begin or how to kind of organize your thoughts so that you can figure out what thing to do first or what thing to do when or which things kind of go together. Well the mind map is going to help you answer that question pretty specifically. And the brain is one of many programs that are out there. It happens to be my choice for mind mapping software that I prefer to use. One, as I mentioned in the blog post, because I love the user interface. I think it's very engaging. And two, because I just like all the features it has. It goes way beyond just mind mapping. And I'm going to show you what I mean. When you create a new brain, what you'll see, like you're seeing here on your screen, you'll have a home thought. I just called this one, if I only had a brain. So this is called a thought. And I can have a child thought, right? I can, I can have a parent thought, which goes above it. Or I can have what's called a jump thought, which goes off to the side. 
It really all depends, and that's the beauty of this, is that I can organize things exactly according to how my brain works. That's what I love about this so much. Now, this area here where the thoughts are located is called the plex. I think that's the name they use. It's called the plex, something like that. You can read on the brain's blog for sure and let me know if I'm wrong. The other thing you'll have down here is this is a notepad right here, so you can type out notes about your thought. And over here is kind of your attachment section. So let's take a look at that real quick. I can add all kinds of attachments, images, library folder, access database, uh, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, publisher, uh, Word doc, text doc, I can link directly to, I can link to a file rather than actually having the file in the thought, I can link to a file that's located somewhere else, like let's say Dropbox, as I mentioned in the blog post. I can link to a folder. Again, I can link to a Dropbox folder. And I can link to a URL, a web address. So lots of flexibility here, but what's even better is every thought has this little icon, which when I click on it, it launches a folder in Windows Explorer. And once I do that, of course, Windows will open this up and you'll see the folders uh, the folders name is some long almost hexadecimal looking kind of code just ignore that it's just the way the brain index is sort of the home for where it's going to keep your files and as soon as I put a file in here and close it it will attach it and I'll just to give you a quick sample we'll just kind of right click choose new and create a, a text document just to give you an example and so you can see what this looks like hi mom Okay, so I've just created a file in a folder, it's just like working in any other folder in, on my computer. And when I close this, sure enough, it shows up here as a text document. Like I said, so, so you can put anything in here. You can put any kind of document in here and attach it. What else? I can sync this to the web. So when I click my sync button here and click OK, it will sync everything up, including my files and any other changes I've made. And once it finishes, which we'll give it a second to do, I'm going to take you over to the web page version of this brain and you'll see exactly what it looks like. So hold on, there it goes. And let's come over here and we'll go over to, here's the web version of the brain. I click my refresh button on my Chrome browser here and there's my attachment right there. And if I click on it, it'll download it using my browser's download uh, option. So that's the overview of what a thought is and where you're gonna start. You're gonna start with a home thought. That's what this is called. And then as I kind of mentioned in the blog post, what you're going to want to start to do is figure out how you want to organize your brain. Now you can have multiple brains. Notice I've got several. Each one of these uh, icons up here is a different brain that I've created for a different purpose. You can keep everything in one place or you can choose to have uh, uh, you know, different brains for different functions. So let's quickly see what happens when I want to create, I want to start expanding upon this. So let's say I want to do business and personal. I just click the child, uh, uh, the child, the button to create a child thought, and over here I say personal. And if you want to create multiple thoughts here, you can separate them with a semicolon. So personal and business. We'll do that to start. When I hit enter, it creates two separate thoughts based on where I put the semicolon. Now let's talk about business for a minute. Let's go into the business section because this is where I'm assuming most of you watching this are wondering about using this for your business. That's why you're here. So let's focus on that. What I can start doing here is I can segment my business based on how, again, how my thinking works into the different areas. I might have accounting, uh, marketing. Uh, within marketing off social media, so I'll put that in separately, but let's just call it operations for another major category. So I create those thoughts. Then we can come over to marketing. And over here I can put in social media. Okay, then in social media I can put things like campaigns, right? So I can start, you know, organizing my different campaigns. And again, because I can attach documents, I can, you know, within campaigns, I can start actually creating a separate thought for every different campaign I want to do. And each one will have its own folders with all the documents that relate to it. I also might want to have social profiles. Okay, and then within this, I'm going to have you know, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus. Okay, let's create these thoughts. Now let's see how to attach a link because I've actually prepared and I've got some of these websites up. So what I do is I come over here and I'm just going to kind of uh, minimize this off to the side of the screen and then move it over. Not really what I meant to do. 
but I just need to get this so that both the uh, web page and the attachments section here are showing. Then you saw how to do it manually by clicking the Add Attachment, but I could just click here and drag it right in. I need to make sure I'm on the Facebook thought first. So let's do that. Drag Facebook in right there. See, and it creates the attachment. Let's go to Google Plus. Bring that in, Google Plus. And then finally, for now, we have Twitter. Bring that over. So this way, what you're doing is you're just putting your profiles, you're bookmarking your profiles and keeping them sort of at close reach, which makes it easy. Now watch what happens. If I go home and I want to find my Twitter thoughts, I can type Twitter in the search and it finds it and brings it right up. Same thing works on the web. So this makes it really easy to start organizing your thoughts. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could do campaigns around this stuff. Now let's look at another use case. All right, I talked about this in the blog also. Uh, let's say I want to do projects. I create a projects thought. Within here, I'll have project A. Okay, then coming back up here into the general business category, let's say I've got my employees. Okay, and then let's say within employees, I've got Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. Okay, and now let's say I want to assign Bobby to this project. Notice here, because I'm just one level below business, I can see the other categories that are inside of business. Notice I've got projects here. So if I want to say that Ricky's going to work on project A, what I may want to do is I, I click on Ricky, because notice at the bottom here what it does is it, this gives you kind of a, a schematic or a mapping of what thoughts you've recently visited. So I want to click on Ricky just to get him in there, to get him to show up there. Let's go back and let's go over to projects, project A, and I want to assign Ricky to this project. Well, here's his thought right down here. I just click and drag up and make him a child of that project. So now I have project A associated with Ricky. If I click on Ricky, notice what happens. I see him there tied into employees. I see him there tied into project A. And again, I can have all kinds, since this is the employee thought, I can have all kinds of information about Ricky in here. I can have his employment agreement, whatever else. And look over here, I can check off and make the thought private. That way, if I do happen to have this brain shared on the web, that particular thought can't be seen by anyone who doesn't have the login to actually log into the brain. So it won't be visible here. That's nice to know. So I can keep thoughts private even though the brain might be shared. And the other thing is, in terms of sharing, you have several options here. <clears throat> While I'm logged in, I go to my account here. <clears throat> it puts the most recently used brains at the top of your list. And I can click on the little arrow here and choose settings. And there's essentially three settings. Completely private, nobody can see it unless they're logged in. Unlisted means uh, it can't be found in the global brain directory because they do have kind of a community around these things. Um, uh, so if it's unlisted, it won't be accessible there, but it'll be accessible only to those with whom I share the link. And then, of course, public means it's available to anyone. It might be found by somebody who's just browsing the brain, because I can click Explore here, and you can see uh, brains that other people have created and made public. And what's cool about these things is people you know, have made a nice little resource out of these brains. If you go and explore this a bit, you'll see that people just have gathered all kinds of information from all around the web and just put information together you know, that I can see where it can become really useful. In fact, when I discovered that I could embed a brain in a web page, that's what I did. And I've got one here in my personal blog. And what I've started to do is I've started to accumulate information that I think people might find useful. Some of it, of course, is information specific to me. I have my about.me page in here. And, and what happens is when you click on the thought, it will uh, come around to it. And then down below on the web version, it'll show you anything that's attached to that thought. You know, again, the same things that we show down here. It just looks a little different on the web version. And this link is clickable. You know, it's perfectly active so people can go on and visit my about.me page. I think that's about it. You know, we talked about a few other use cases here. Um, 
you know, in terms of what you can do with it, presentations, I've done a few presentations using the brain and it blows people away, especially because most people are expecting PowerPoint. So just in terms of the fact that it's different, plus this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the interface. I mean, to me, this is just really nice. It's engaging. It kind of makes people go, huh, what is that? You know, and it's because it's really cool. It's really cool the way it functions and lives. And you're welcome to come here. It's uh, nerdenterprises.com forward slash Seth. And you'll see the link at the top called, you know, that says, what is Seth thinking? And I've made this public, so if you want to think, you know, look at how I'm thinking in terms of how to set up goals for the year. This is the time of year to do it. This is why I'm demonstrating this product for you, because it's a great product to use in order to outline what your goals are and organize your thoughts around those goals and determine what you want to do, when you want to do it, all that sort of thing. Speaking of which, there's also a calendar feature here, which I'm not going to go into much detail on, but it can be synced with your Google Calendar, if that's what you use. And just like any, calendar, any good calendar, it has the ability to have recurring appointments and all-day appointments, and you can set reminders and so on and so forth. So I invite you to try the brain for free. I provided my affiliate link to the brain in the blog post. Take the free trial. Play around with it for 30 days. The free version of this actually gives you a lot of the features. And what I always tell people on something like this is do the free version. If that turns out to be enough for you, great. But if you're like me, then you're probably going to reach a point sooner or later where you want the features that are offered when you get the paid version. How much does it cost? If memory serves, I've got the pro version, and I think it runs me about 250 a year. To me, that's very worthwhile because I use it, and that's the thing, which again goes back to why I stress take the free trial first before you spend the money because, you know, $250, is, it's not a little amount of money. Of course, it's all relative. To some people, it's a lot of money. But the point is, if you're going to use a product like this, then I definitely think it's worth the $250. So try it out for the 30 days I think they give you and play with it. Make sure you're going to use it. Make sure you're going to get something out of it. And as I mentioned in the beginning, if you would like additional help, if you'd like a one-hour training, where I can walk through your business with you and show you how I might set things up in the brain for your business, then by all means, visit my page, nerdenterprises.com forward slash software dash training and register for a session. Sign up for a one-hour session. I'll be more than happy to walk you through and spend that hour and, of course, record the session so afterwards you can watch a video so you don't have to remember everything we did. As always, if you have any questions, email me, Seth, at nerdenterprises.com. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.